Today I'm going to share what I have learned about how to make a souffle very simply. So I know I've always been intimidated by it. I go to a restaurant and I have them and they're beautiful and I always think, well, it's impossible. I'd never be able to do it. And I've been practicing for a while and I think I finally have it down to a system that I am ready to share. So this is what I have planned and I'm going to explain it ahead of time, which is, and I'm also prepared ahead of time, which is a little bit out of the ordinary, but I think it's really helpful for a recipe like this. So first column is what we are going to do to prepare the containers that we're baking in. The second column involves the egg separation process and what we're doing with the eggs. The third column represents the base of the souffle, which we're going to do very simply. I'm not even going to do it on the stove. I'm going to show you how I've shortened it. And then the fourth column literally is just where we add the chocolate in. Another tool I find handy in doing the souffle is the whisk attachment on my, my little hand mixer. This is a KitchenAid actually. And what I really like about it is it whips the egg a lot faster because at one point in this recipe, we have to whip the, white, the egg whites so they're stiff. So I find that this really comes in handy, but you can do it with a regular mixer so you don't have to you know, go get one of these just for the souffle. <laughs> Whatever you have will be just fine. And here is how we do it. Are you ready? Because <laughs> I am. You know, the good part about the souffle is you have to eat it right away. So it's one of those things where you bake it and you have to serve it imme immediately. So that means that I get to taste it as soon as it's done. All right, first things first, we take one tablespoon of butter and we melt it. Be right back. Okay, so we have our butter melted and I have my containers ready. You need to have containers that you can actually bake in the oven. And these small ones are really perfect for that. So the first step is to take our melted butter and line and like coat the inside of the baking dishes. So I'm going to do that. And then I take right out of my sugar bowl actually, I just take some sugar and I pour it in each one, a little bit of sugar in each. And then you just do a little bit of this to get the sugar all the way around the outside and all over the table because you know, that's how I do things. So we're gonna slide it around swirl it around and then these two these two are ready and we step one we set it aside now we take two eggs and we're going to separate them because I just want to work with two egg whites later and I need one egg yolk so I'm going to save one of the egg yolks so I'm going to use a separate dish to save one of my eggs one of my yolks and I have this nice egg separator that's going to do the job so I take my egg white and it goes into this bowl and I take my yolk and I'm going to set it aside and it goes in column four because it's going to get added to the chocolate later. Now I take my second egg and I separate it. It's really important to do this in a separate bowl because if you even get the littlest bit of egg yolk in with the whites, the, the whites don't stiffen up and then you have to do it all over again. So I've made that mistake and you can learn from it. Make sure there's not a hint of yolk in that egg white. So there goes the second white and then we just set aside the other yolk. We don't need it. You can save it for another recipe if you want. So now we have our egg whites and we set those aside. The next step is to take another one tablespoon of butter and we're gonna melt it and then we're gonna add some flour. Be right back. So I've got the butter melted and I will add one tablespoon of flour. So I just, I just use my serving tablespoon, it's close enough, and I add that in, and then I whisk it up till it makes a little pasty kind of situation, like that, okay? Then I have ready to go, because I've prepared myself, four tablespoons of just whole milk. You can use any kind of milk. And then I'm gonna add that to the flour, and I'm gonna slowly, carefully, whisk that around until it's smooth. Once that's nice and smooth, we just set that aside. Now you need two ounces of chocolate and I'm using just the mini milk chocolate chips and I actually measured it out and weighed it ahead of time. So this third of a cup is about two ounces of chocolate. So I'm going to melt this in the microwave and be right back. So I find that the chips take about, that many chips takes about a minute to a minute and a half to melt them. Oh, perfect. I've got it down to a science now. So you melt and they don't, maybe not look melted. They maybe don't, oh my God. They maybe don't look melted until you stir. But once you do, everything just smooths right out. And we have nice, smooth, melted chocolate ready. Now we whip those egg whites. And this is the key part of making the souffle. So if you have cream of tartar, 
which I just spilled. If you have cream of tartar, you can add that in. It's not mandatory, I've made it without because before I bought the cream of tartar, I didn't have it in the house and I just did a souffle anyway. So I just do a few shakes of the cream of tartar, just a little bit, not a lot. I've got my mixer ready. And now I'm gonna whip this until it gets stiff. And at that point, I'll start sprinkling in some sugar. So here we go. So you can see the waves are forming in the egg white. So as you whip it and you see that those waves forming and it's nice and firm, we begin to sprinkle in a couple of tablespoons of sugar. So I do one, I stir it, I mix it, mix it well, and then I'll do another. Hopefully you can see that. It really looks very fluffy and nice. <laughs> Let me show you that because that's a key part of it. You see how it is firm? Let me just show you. It, they say that you're supposed to be able to make peaks, but you see what happens there? It's literally like whipped like whipped cream. And that is what you want from your egg whites. Nice and firm. <laughs> now we get to the fun part. I guess it's all the fun part, but we're going to take our chocolate stir 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 give it another stir we're going to add in the egg yolk that i've got standing by and give that a good stir isn't this fun <laughs> then we're going to add in our milk and flour and butter mixture and we're going to stir that together and that's nice and creamy okay let me show you what that looks like so it's a bit liquidy but it's nice and smooth. Now we take the egg whites and you're gonna take half of this and put it in with the chocolate and stir it well. So we're just gonna do half. And we're gonna get a nice smooth mix here where it mixes together all the way thoroughly. Okay, now for the second part, we want to just fold it in. So we don't wanna mix it too much. You wanna make sure it the egg white kind of still is able to do its job, whatever that is. So you just gently fold it in. And I find if you don't mix it enough, the souffle comes out lumpy. It's got like bubbles of white. So I find that even though I'm folding it, I still wanna make sure it's pretty well blended. And I've experimented with this less and more in terms of the stirring, uh, the blending. And if, if it has those white bumps, those white bumps are gonna bake in. So you don't wanna see, you don't wanna see lumps. And what I want to do is fill the container three quarters of the way. <laughs> and I made the mistake one time of filling it all the way because I was really gonna push the limits and it overflowed and it was a disaster. So not doing that again. I've done it, I've seen it all with the souffle at this point. Now, typically, the containers for the souffle are a bit smaller than the ones I have. So my first one filled up the right amount. Let me show you. My second one isn't quite as full, so it's not going to come up quite as high. But I'm going to just make it as a backup. And we're going to put these in at a 375 oven for about 25 minutes. And I'll check on it. And as it starts to rise up, it's tricky with the souffle because if you wait too long, it'll start to go back down after it's already risen. So it's about finding that sweet spot with your oven to find out exactly what the timing is to make it come just high enough before it starts to go back down. <laughs> and I don't even think I've have it perfected yet, but I'm going to watch the clock today and see what my sweet spot timing is. And let's hope for the best. Here we go. It's been about 20 minutes and it has risen as far as it's gonna go. So I'm going to take it out. It's not quite as high as I'd like it, but I know now that it's gonna start to sink. So let me take it out and show you. So you can see it fluffed up and it looks really pretty, but it didn't rise above the container, which is what you really want with a souffle. So a little disappointing. <laughs> So one time I filled it higher and then it overflowed. So you have to just find the sweet spot and I guess I haven't quite found the sweet spot yet. But anyway, this is looking pretty and I'm sure it tastes delicious. So I'm gonna jump right in. <laughs> 